listening to us on the various platforms uh, tonight. I am Larry Betty, the Dean of Chapel and Vice President of Student Life and Engagement. We're delighted that you are here to share with us in our annual fall concert. Your presence means a lot to us, and we're indeed grateful for this opportunity to present these young people tonight who will be sharing with you in song. They are recognized all over the nation, outstanding voices, and I am proud to present to you tonight Miss Valerie R. Harris, accompanied by Mr. Patrick Whitehead and the Miles College Choir. Come on, give it up for them. To those of you who are streaming with us live on Facebook and YouTube and those who are assembled here in Brown Hall Auditorium, again we say welcome. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for this day and yet another opportunity to be here on this earth. Songwriter says, and are we yet alive to see each other's face? Say, gracious Lord, where am I now? Am I thy servant still? We say yes. And as we prepare for this concert, we ask that you would bless our students. Bless the director, Valerie R. Harris, and her staff. But Father, we realize, even until the starting of this hour, that we may experience temporary troubles but through you, we will find a permanent fix. Bless us, bless our president, and bless Miles College. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen, amen. of the phenomenal Miles College Golden Voices Choir. Over the four years I have been a part of the choir, I have witnessed the growth of its members as well as myself as we challenge each other on getting through the temporary troubles of what COVID-19 has put before us during these troubling times. Even though the challenging obstacles of not being able to have full rehearsals every day, we still were able to safely have sectionals and at least one full rehearsal every week to build a strong bond and work ethic. We were taught as a choir by our amazing directors, Mrs. Harris and Mr. Whitehead, that God can show you no matter what your trouble is, there is always a permanent structure. With that being said, again, I would like to say welcome and enjoy the concert. Thank you.
been preaching long enough to know you don't get right up when they sing a song like that. <laughs> that there's a little more left uh, on the inside. Will you join me again in saying thank you to uh, what has taken place so far, Miss Valerie Harris in the Miles College Choir. Valerie Aura Harris in the Miles College Choir. Amen. Have you enjoyed yourself so far? We have one of the best directors in the nation. And uh, I don't have to say anything. They've shown that they're the best choir in the nation. The Miles College Choir. You have had a treat so far, but like every good meal, you need to have your good dessert. You haven't had a good meal till you cap it off with a good dessert. Ladies and gentlemen, I, gentlemen, boys and girls, and alum and friends, all of you who are tuned in tonight, it is with a great delight, it is a great delight to have this privilege and opportunity to present to you tonight our special guest tonight, accompanied by the Miles College Choir, an aura, a, a aura and B legend with such great hits as Let Them Talk, if they want to. One of my favorites, uh, no faith, no love. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, for my man. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Drown in my own tears. My, my, my. Everybody makes a mistake sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had so many, so many more great hits, but the one that uh, will never grow old and will never be forgotten is the legendary song, I Had a Talk with My Man Last Night. Say that, say that, say that, say that, say that, say that, say that. But God said, that's all right. Go ahead and have a talk with your man. But God had other plans. So now she's not only talking to her man at night, but before she closed the night, she had to talk with God. She is talking with God now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is with a full measure of pure pleasure that I present to you Pastor Reverend Mitty Ling Collier. Pray for the answer 
something, move on to something more. If you just ask it, believe it, claim it, the answer is there. Oh, you know. When you ask God for the solving of the problems that come your way, but then you still go on worrying about how to work it out yourself every day. But if you just pray for the answer, then move on to something more. If you just ask it, believe it, blame it, the answer is that before you know. Well, it really gets hard. of things hope for it's the evidence of things you cannot see if you just ask it believe it then claim it the answer is there for you know you ask God for the solving of the problems that come your way sometimes the stars get so dark and nothing good will ever come to you. But when the clouds get so dark, young, and the storms start raging through, if you just ask it, believe it, then find it. The sun will come shining through before you know it. Ask it, believe it, blame it. The sun will come shining through. I know if you ask it, believe it, then blame it. The sun will come shining through. Praise God, everybody. I am so thankful and so grateful to be here at home. I want to thank President Knight. Thank you, Dean Beatty. Thank you, Dean Leon Parker. And listen, this lady that took this beautiful choir and taught the songs to them, Thank you so very much, Ms. Harris, for taking the time out. And you all just don't know, this is not about money to me. This is about being able to be at home. Uh, when I was singing R&B, a year didn't pass without me being in this city at least six times. And I've been saved, you all, since 1972. And I can count on one hand the people that have reached for me to come home since I've been saved. So now you can see why I'm so happy to be here at home. Somebody reached for me. One day my portal rang and I missed it. And I said, who is this? Leon Park. Didn't know because I hadn't seen him since he was a little boy. Hadn't heard from him or anything. And they were asking me, I called them back, and they wanted me to be on the special month of prayer in September. And I readily accepted because I was anxious to be doing anything for Miles College. Well, my sister passed right after then, and I came home and looked in the back, and there was the, the two deans sitting in the back. And when I finished singing and we were marching out, he came running behind me and said, I just talked to, I just talked to Miss Harris, and we're gonna have you down there in Birmingham for our choir's special guest on their concert. 
Oh, I started shouting. I just couldn't believe things were happening like that for me. But I found out that when God gets ready to bless you, you better get out the way because he'll run over you to get you where he wants you to go. I've traveled all over the country and out of the country, y'all. And I've never been treated the way I'm treated now, here at home, this time. And I am so thankful. And I'm back to y'all where I belong because I started in the church. Started singing at First Baptist Church up in Pratt City. And then went on to school, went on to my elementary school. And there's the people in the neighborhood that the young people would tell the teachers, Midlene can sing, you know. And so Walter Hurd caught me at South Prep and had me singing. And then after that, on our graduation, Professor P.D. Jackson was our speaker, the principal at Western Olin High School. And he walked past me because I sung, Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. You all know the song. And when I finished, I know you all don't, you all babies. <laughs> They don't even know who I had to talk with my man last night. <laughs> but I went, you know, and he came out and he pointed at me. He said, I'll be waiting on you at Western. And he was. Took me right to Miss Stolen work. And she started playing. He said, she can sing. She started playing. And from then on, I started singing. And was on different talent shows at Western with uh, Eddie Kendrick, Paul Williams of The Temptations, they were right there. We were on talent shows together. And then after that, you all, I came away to school, went to Alabama a and first, didn't like it, so I came back and came here to Miles. <laughs> right. And when I came here, Monsieur Rambo was here teaching French. And he started getting gigs for me, that's what they call them, in the different clubs. And then there was an opening for an artist at the 401 Club in Powderly. And Lovey Hayden, she told her husband, I know somebody can sing. And you all don't have to beg for anything. Just ask God. Ask it and believe it and claim it. I wasn't looking to sing in a club. I was looking to sing in church. But that's what happened to me. And I went and I started singing at the 401 and you couldn't get in there on the weekend. All the teachers and the students were at the 401. Yes, she said, woo! <laughs> They were all there at the 401 Club, along with my parents and all of my friends. And so I left to come to Chicago to visit my brother just for the summer. But while there, Mr. Rambo was there who visited his, his aunt. And he started getting talent shows. You know, the talent shows were held in taverns. They weren't long American Idol and all of that. They were at the taverns, and I started going around to the different ones with Mr. Rambo, my uncle would drive us. And I ended up at the biggest talent show in Chicago, the Al Benson talent show. And it was held at the Regal Theater. And when I went for the audition, he told everybody, so you all can work for second and third place because we know who's going to win first place. And sure enough, I did. I won first place, and it was awarded that I opened the big show for Etta James and B.B. King at the Rego and get a recording contract with Chess Records. And here comes Miles Cottage again. Lloyd Reese was here, and he wrote my very first song, the one he mentioned, I Gotta Get Away From It All. And I recorded that and began to go all over 
singing after I answered, you all know little Johnny Taylor made, I'm going to find me a part-time love. And I answered it, but you don't have to find no part-time love. <laughs> That's the song that put me on, they call it Chitlin Circuit, where you went all down the Gulf Coast. And I told Reverend Bailey, uh, Bailey, I said, you know, the most humiliating thing for me was when we were had to go through the kitchen, y'all. They rented a floor on the big hotels, because we couldn't stay at the big hotel. We could stay at A.G. Gaston and the Lorraine Hotel where Dr. King got killed, those places, because they were owned by black people. But you could not go in the Sheraton and all of the big holiday inns and all of this unless they bought a whole floor just for us to go on. And we couldn't go through the front door. We had to go through the kitchen and take the freight elevator up to the floor. We were good enough for them to get, take our money, but not good enough to go through the front door. And when we got ready to eat, we couldn't eat there. We had to go out the back door and go across the track to a place where some of our people own to the soul food joint across the track in order to eat. You all got it good, honey. You all really got it good. We had it hard in those days. Riding down the highway, police stopping you, going through the city, stopping you for nothing, and trying to make sure they find something in your car. Take your money from your pockets, from your purses. We'd had to hide it many times in our bosom because they didn't touch those in order for them not to take our money. And so you have it good. Be a blessing to others. I'm so thankful to have survived. And my last thing that I want to tell is when I went on the road to my last tour, we would go out on two or three times a year for 40 days, 41 nighters, uh, 31 nighters, and 10 to travel. And on the last tour that I did, I heard my voice tone begin to drop. And I didn't know that God was getting ready to put me on his operating table to through a time of darkness, a time of judgment. By the time I got home, I could not sing. I had to pray my way through every night to be able to make it through one song and then get into the second song. When I got home, me and my husband went straight to Chicago ENT Hospital, and I had a polyp on my vocal cord. They said, big as an egg. They said, we're going to take it off. And when we take it off, you're going to have to rest. We're going to take it off with a laser. And you're going to have to rest your voice for six weeks, nothing but writing notes. And I did what they said because that was my means of support. And I was there in my house, just a rocking and a moaning, and a groaning. I found out since then that the Spirit make intercessions for you with groanings. That when you don't know what to pray for, I didn't know until after then, y'all. And what the Spirit had done, my little ass spirit had told the Holy Spirit to tell Jesus, to tell my daddy, if you give me back my voice, I'll use it for you for the rest of my life. I, I didn't know that's what I had said, but he knew what I was saying. And you all, when, as soon as I went back to the doctor after the six weeks, and he said, say, and all I could say was, couldn't nothing come out. When God gets ready to heal you, a doctor can't do you no good. And, and he, they couldn't understand why I couldn't sing because nothing was there. They had done a successful surgery, but God knew what he was doing. And, I, and, and, and when I got back home in this rest period, said, go back and rest another week. That's when I really started groaning and moaning and praying. I heard my mama so many times over the washing machine, scrub old, 
just scrubbing, saying, Lord, have mercy. And that's all I could say in my spirit was, Lord, have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. And one day I heard a voice. Now, Paul could hear a voice. I could too. Same God. <laughs> said, Mitty, sing. And I went to Cromwell and I said, no, I can't sing. I can't sing. Just shaking my head. Mitty, sing. And I opened my mouth, and it came out real gravely. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought can almost under all of my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. But all of a sudden, you know, that voice came up. He looked. Thank you, Jesus. He loved me. to the phone. I called my manager in Atlanta, Georgia. I said, Henry, get my itinerary ready. He said, Mary? I said, yeah. He said, you got your voice back? I got my voice back. Ooh, I got my voice back. <laughs> Just a poem, you all. And that same voice that told me to sing said, wait a minute. This is what I knew, what I had prayed for. I gave you back that voice to sing for me. I turned around, picked up the phone, called Henry back. I said, don't get me no work. I got a new manager now. I got a story to tell, and I got to run on and tell it. And that was in 1972. And by the grace of God, I haven't looked back at one time at what I used to have, because I found something money came by. I found love and joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temper found some fruit to came by in the grocery store you are nothing like serving the Lord he's given me a ministry uh, a pastor church a Bible study telephone prayer line ministry in 1983 in 1985 he expanded that to the feed of neighbor ministry where we feed hundreds of people through Rain, shine, sleet, or snow, right from the street corners in Chicago. And God has blessed me. And I told, I want to thank you, all of you all, for just blessing me so much. And I told President Knight, I said, I'll tell you, everybody thought that I had a talk with my man was first, but it wasn't. I was sitting in the studio one day, young man, Leonard Caston, he played for Greater Harvest Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois, and he was getting ready to teach a song to his choir. And he had an album by Reverend James Cleveland with little Stephanie Mills singing, I had a talk with God last night. And he asked me to help him with the song. And I helped him. And my, my producer came through, Billy Davis, and he said, what is that? And we told him what it was, and he didn't know what he was doing. He went in the back, and he recorded us, and three days later, I got a call saying, Mitty, come down to the studio. We got a song, and it was, I had a talk with my man last night. They had changed the words around, and so it was not first. It was just in the will of God, I feel, because when he gave, got me back to him, I went right back to, I had a talk with God last night. 
And he, I found somebody that wasn't ever too busy for me. My man was too busy sometimes. <laughs> sometimes he didn't want to be bothered. But I found somebody that even in the midnight hour, look at the bush, I could call on him. And he never let me down. Never been too busy for me. Never turned his back on me. I'm so glad. Come on, y'all, choir. Get this choir with big hand for me. We pray. I had a talk with God last night. I'm going to take this off in a minute because it's dark. <laughs> Sing, sing, baby. Part, 
friend, oh Lord, Lord, my way gets dark. I need your light way down here. said, Liddy, I'm God all by myself. And all you got to do is trust me. And you won't need nobody else. Oh. I want to thank you for giving me, giving me the victory. And every time that I need him, he never let me down. He's been so good, so good to me. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh. Saturday, any day, 
First of all, you all were absolutely wonderful. You were the golden voices. You are, you're always great, but for re some reason tonight you were extraordinary. And so I thank you for allowing me to participate and be a part of this this evening. Mrs. Valerie R. Harris, as always. Yeah. 
and Miss Pastor Liddy Collier. You had me in tears. It's hard to do. It's hard to do for me. And But I, I thank you so much for coming home. Miles College will always be your home. And I know you have one degree, but today, on behalf of the Board of Directors of Miles College, let me bring up my Board of Trustee member that's here as well, Gwen Amamu, Mrs. Amamu. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the Miles College uh, Board and, and me as president present you with an honorary doctorate. We thank you so much. We love you and we, we don't ever want you to forget us because we won't forget you ever. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam President. Say, don't, don't don't sit down yet. Hold it right. You can stay right where you are, though. Uh, Dean Parker, will you come? And we want to share. You are so, Ms. Harris, where Ms. Harris? Come on. <laughs> we are so, we are so grateful. I know you have legendary status. You could have just, I mean, you, out of your love for the school. It was, I wanna say this, I think everybody need to hear it. It was never about money for her. Now she's got a going fee now, don't, don't you get me? Don't get me wrong now. She got legendary status. And the feet go along with legendary status. But that didn't matter to her. She came because of her love for you, students, to share her story, to let you know that if this little girl from Pratt City made it, you can too. So we, we want to share with you. Pastor Mitty, we'd like to present this plaque to you this evening from us here on our Miles College campus. It says, Distinguished Malian Recognition, presented to R&B and gospel legend, Pastor Mitty Collier, in recognition of your ongoing contributions to music, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the support of the Miles College Choir. Amen. Given this 21st day of November, in the year of our Lord, 2021, Larry Bailey, Vice President Dean, Valerie R. Harris, Director, Bobby Knight, President. We love you, Pastor Mitty.
come to the close of this event, let me say thank you to all of you who are tuned in on the various platforms, the social platforms tonight. I know you were blessed as we were blessed by the few that were here tonight as well. Young people, you have done an outstanding job. We're so proud of you. You represent your school very, very well. And we want you to know that we recognize you. You are scholars. And you are going places. God has his hands on you. You believe what you sing. And I know I've been watching you and you're walking it. We all make mistakes in our lives. I wish I could stand here and say I never made any, but you know I'll be lying. We all have sinned and fallen short. But we have to pick ourselves up and move on, and you're doing that. How many seniors do we have in here today? All right. Look at here. Look at here. Now let me ask the proverbial question. How many graduating seniors do we have in here? All right. All right. Wonderful. And we bless you tonight. And we thank God for you. We're going to sing the alma mater, and then we're going to do a closing prayer. And Dean Leon Parker is going to come and close us out in prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're going to close. You know how we close after he prays. But I want you to recognize Dean Parker. Come on up, Dean Parker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And there are several reasons I'm bringing him up. Because he stood where you are standing. <laughs> Just like you are. He was a student here. Sung in the choir. Just like you. He, he listened to my going on and on. Just like you. <laughs> but God saw something in him special. And brought him back to impart into you what was given him. Now, those of you who are going to be around, I'm passing the torch yeah. on to <laughs> Dean Parker. Listen to me carefully. He's much younger than I am. Yeah, he is. But I was his age when I came here, too, now. Why did I say that? I want you to give him the same amount of courtesy and respect that you give to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know he's close to your age, but he's been through that. He's gone on and distinguished himself. He's, he's, he's look, successful pastor, got his education, working to finish now his doctorate. He's not your peer. Yes, sir. Hear me. He's not your peer. He's your leader. Yes, sir. So I want you to give him all the courtesy and all the respect that you have given me over the years. Hear him now after we sing our alma mater.
Let us pray. God, we thank you and we love you. In this season of Thanksgiving, we realize that every day is truly a day of Thanksgiving. And so we pray this blessing upon your people, those who are streaming from across the country and around the world, but especially right here in Fairfield, Alabama. Now unto him who is able yes, sir, yes, sir. to keep you from falling yes. and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glorious, majesty, dominion both now and forevermore. 